Between the cooling of the molten Earth and the present year, nearly 4.6 billion years have elapsed. That is 4,600 million years, an almost impossible number to contemplate. Finally, about 3 billion years ago, anaerobic bacteria arose that were able to survive in the oxygen-free atmosphere of the young Earth. Aerobic, or oxygen-dependent life, began as single-celled organisms about two billion years ago, when blue-green algae evolved. These tiny organisms used carbon dioxide from the atmosphere for energy and turned it into free oxygen. As they lived and died, oxygen was released into the atmosphere. Over the next billion years, this oxygen reached levels high enough to support other living things. After that, life began to diversify and become more complex until about 500 million years ago, in what we call the Cambrian, the fossil record shows a virtual explosion of different life forms. But what exactly is a fossil? The word fossil comes from the Latin meaning to be dug up, and it refers to all or part of a once living animal, plant, even a grain of pollen that has become preserved. A fossil can be just an imprint, or it can be the whole thing. The petrified forest in northern Arizona is a good example of how a massive thing like a whole tree, or even a whole forest of trees, can become entirely fossilized. But how do fossils form? For fossils to form, three things must happen. First, the animal or plant must die and be protected from decay or disturbance. One way this can happen is when the dead animal or plant is quickly covered in mud, sand, volcanic ash, tree sap, or something else that excludes the air. Second, the animal, plant, or trace of such usually must be covered even more deeply, such as when erosion or silting fills in a valley. This second burial must be long enough for the original organic material to be turned into rock. Third, the fossil bearing layers must resurface without being twisted, heated, or broken to pieces. Finally, someone must find the fossil and carefully remove it so that no vital information is lost. People talk about living fossils. Isn't this a contradiction? Obviously, to become a fossil at all, one has to be very dead. So when we speak of living fossils, what we are really talking about is animals who show conservation of morphology. In other words, they have not changed their body shape 
or their lifestyles very much, even after hundreds of millions of years. Of course, plants can also become fossilized, and many are considered living fossils. But what about the unliving fossils, animals that, like dinosaurs, became extinct? Over the last 600 million years, hundreds of thousands of animals and plants have gone extinct. Only a tiny, tiny number of creatures that once lived on Earth are still here. Going extinct is the rule on this planet, not the exception. What caused all those animals and plants to go extinct? The short answer is changes in the environment. An animal or plant has two options. Keep up with change by adapting and evolving or fail to adapt and go extinct. Things like volcanic eruptions, floods, droughts, even ice ages can cause enormous change virtually overnight. But the quickest agent of global change is an asteroid or comet impact. Does this happen very often? Unfortunately, all the time. Because we modern humans have been around for such a short time, and because the forces that normally shape the Earth do it very, very slowly, it is nearly impossible for us to understand that life on Earth has come very close to starting from scratch on many occasions. The granddaddy asteroid impact that we know of hit the Yucatan Peninsula off the southeast coast of what is now Mexico about 65 million years ago, bringing the age of dinosaurs and at least 85% of all life on Earth to a spectacular fiery conclusion. Known as Chicxulub, the asteroid that hit the seafloor off the Mexican coast was six miles across and traveling 105,000 feet per second. It blasted a hole at least 100 miles wide and five miles deep, releasing the equivalent of a billion million tons of TNT. Tsunamis thousands of feet high traveled around the world, dumping millions of tons of rock on the continental shelf. Waves roared inland for hundreds of miles. Hurricane forest winds blasted everything left. Forest fires raged over the earth. 400 cubic miles of dust in the atmosphere blanketed the planet and completely blocked the sun. Global 24-hour darkness lasted for months, possibly years. Acid rain fell on the survivors, burning them horribly. It's no wonder the dinosaurs did not survive this Holocaust. The wonder is that anything did. But survival is also the rule on this planet. Once the dinosaurs were gone, the earth was virtually empty, and the surviving mammals made the most of the wide open spaces.